أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاح حيا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد As this is the month of the Quran within our own capacity we've each been spending a little extra time as best we can connecting with the Quran whether it's reading in Arabic, reading a good translation, listening, trying to understand, reflect, spending more time with the Qur'an. And as you comb through the Qur'an with a fine-tooth comb, you start to notice different trends. You notice different patterns. You notice different constellations. Allah says in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, فَلَا أُقُسِمُ بِمَا وَاقِعَ النُّجُومِ وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ إِنَّهُ لَقُرْآنٌ كَرِيمٌ Allah swears by the placement of the stars. And this is a huge oath, if we only knew. إِنَّهُ لَقُرْآنٌ كَرِيمٌ There is no doubt this Qur'an is noble. This Qur'an is generous. This Qur'an, it gives and it gives and it gives. Guidance and motivation and inspiration. As we've been spending more time with the Quran, it's supposed to have an effect on our hearts, on our tongues, on our eyes, on our ears, on our character. It's supposed to be a process of transformation. That's in general, and especially in the month of Quran, in the month of the Quran, in the month of Ramadan. We're not supposed to exit Ramadan the same way that we entered. Even if, even if we exit a little bit better, that counts. If we exit much better than before, that's the idea, that's the goal. And we ask Allah to help all of us to try our best in that regard. Amin Rabbil Alameen. One of the trends that you notice throughout the Qur'an is when Allah describes people who believe. Allah often mentions them in the plural. Normally, you find الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ 
those collectively, those who believe, and they do good deeds. You have a few examples in the Qur'an in which Allah mentions the individual. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةٌ طَيِّبًا But normally, Allah mentions the group. One of the blessings we're supposed to take from this, one of the, the, the lessons that we should take from this, the value of community, the importance of community, we all, we need each other both near and far. So on a micro level, this was a beautiful example just before Jum'an, we ask Allah to bless those who just accepted Islam, we ask Allah to give them tawfiq, we ask Allah to protect them, and we ask Allah to, to continue to guide them in their path and to help us as their brothers and sisters in faith to be there for them. Because for a lot of people, when you convert to Islam, it can be like a type of social suicide. All of a sudden, you're by yourself. All of a sudden, you're not hanging out with the same crowd before. You may not even be welcomed by your family anymore. There are many, many, many challenges that many converts go through. And I say this as someone, my mother's a convert and my wife is a convert. The best thing that can happen actually already happened. And this is rare. Please appreciate it, to immediately be paired with a mentor, to immediately be paired with someone. Th this is prophetic in nature. This is what the Prophet did in Medina, Mu'akha. He paired people together. Yes, in that context, it was the Muhajirin with the Ansar, it was the immigrants with the hosts. But the point is that the Prophet paired them together. And then even when later on in Medina, if somebody embraced Islam, the Prophet would pair them with a mentor. There's so much wisdom contained in that. We cannot go it alone. We can't do this alone. So on a micro level, we need the community. And on a macro global level, we also need the community. So as you spend time with Qur'an today, tomorrow, the day after that, especially in these blessed last 10 nights of Ramadan, let us reflect internally and think how am I doing as a community member? Oftentimes we think to ourselves, what can the community do for me? Let's turn it around. Let's, this is what our deen teaches us. What can I do for my community? There is a need for both, yes. There is a need for a healthy dynamic and osmosis of give and take. But most of the time, most people think, I want to receive. The reality is that's not the crux of our deen. Our deen constantly teaches us to give, to do, to produce before you consume. Some companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they came to him, they were very poor. And they complained to him about their financial state. What's interesting is what they were complaining about. It wasn't complaining about their financial state just because of their financial state, even though that's valid. Zakat is a pillar of our deen for a reason. But the reason why they were complaining, they went to the Prophet ﷺ, and they said that, you know, we pray, and these wealthier companions, these other community members, so we pray, we don't have much, they pray and they have a lot. We pray and they pray, we fast and they fast. So we're, they're thinking from a, 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 a standpoint of competition. Their paradigm is, we want to produce more good deeds. So when they're mentioning this to the Prophet ﷺ, they're saying it in the context of what? Ya Rasulullah. We're doing these good deeds. They're, they're doing the same good deeds. But the difference between us and them is they have more wealth so they can give more sadaqah. They can give more charity. That's why they were complaining about their state. We wish we had more so we can produce more. We wish we had more so we can give more. We wish we had more so we can live the Qur'an more. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Dozens of times in the Qur'an, Allah pairs these two concepts together. Prayer and charity. Prayer and charity. And look even more closely. What's the norm? Those community those who pray, and those who give charity. The need for community. 
And when we pray together, it's supposed to produce more than just that prayer. It's not supposed to be, prayer's not supposed to be in a vacuum. You pray, you finish your prayer, and nothing changes. Why does Allah mention those who establish prayer? Indicating they pray together and they're people of zakah, of sadaqah, of charity. Because when you pray together as a community, a sign that that prayer is truly beneficial for the person and the community is the antennas go up. What do I mean by that? People get to know each other more within the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, they get to know each other because they love them because first of all, they're human. And secondly, they believe in la ilaha illallah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And again, those, not individual, those who believe their deepest love, their strongest love is for Allah Azza wa Jal. So when a community comes together and they pray together, what's supposed to be produced, more charity is given. People start to, to, to learn more about each other. People start to get to know each other. And then when someone in the community mentions to someone else that, hey, so-and-so, they were just diagnosed with a serious illness. Hey, let, let's put some money together so we can help them. That's what a healthy community looks like. It's not only about prayer in a vacuum. There's no question prayer is extremely important. But what does it lead to? Allah mentions time and time again in the Qur'an, those who pray and those who give. Community. Lived iman looks like producing good deeds on a micro level towards each other and on a macro level in connection with the ummah globally, the ummah as a whole, the global Muslim community as a whole. So I need to reflect within myself, within my heart. How have I been connected? How, excuse me, how have I been affected by my connection with the Qur'an? If I'm connected to the Qur'an, but I'm not affected by the Qur'an, something is wrong in me. Not with the Qur'an. The Qur'an is perfect as it is. Maybe I need to adjust the dial, the tune of my radio. When you think of any radio station, the radio station is doing its part, but if you don't have it, if you don't have your phone or your dial set to it, the issue is not with the radio station. The issue is on the receiving end. Am I doing my part to make sure that I'm receiving this message with no static, with no confusion, with no... Am I doing my part? Am I cleaning up my heart and polishing my heart so I can receive this message? And when that happens, the heart is like fertile soil. Ihtazzat <laughs> warabat. Allah describes people of Qur'an, people of Iman, Allah compares their hearts to the ground. When it rains, something changes. Something shakes underneath the soil. Something sprouts. Something grows. Something is produced. This example is given time and time again in the Qur'an. We ask Allah to make us people of Qur'an. We ask Allah to help us to learn the Qur'an and to live it as best we can. We ask Allah to bless this community, and we ask Allah to make it easy for us to continue to do good for the rest of Ramadan and even after Ramadan. Amin Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li bilakum fasaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم I want to conclude with this Our beloved Nabi صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم He taught us that you will be with who you love You will be with who you love I can't just claim that I love the Prophet ﷺ, and I'm not producing anything that backs up that claim. What Allah judges us by is our reality. Words have their time and their place. But what about the heart? What about the limbs? What about the words? What about the eyes? What about the ears? 
Am I at least trying to little by little go in the right direction of proving my claim that I love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What was the main change for the Prophet in Ramadan? He spent more time with Jibreel alayhi salam and as a result more time with the Qur'an. What was the fruit that came from that? His community describes it. Outside of the month of Ramadan, he was the most generous of people. But in the month of Ramadan, he became even, even more generous. The Qur'an is supposed to lead to more generosity. This is our Prophet ﷺ. So if I want to be with who I love, then I need, to, I need to live that claim as best I can. As Imam Bashir mentioned, I'm here from Sacramento, California on behalf of Ihsan Foundation for West Africa, an organization that I know some folks, Amjad Bai and others in this community are familiar with. There are many projects that we're doing. Ihsan has been around since 1996 whether it's building orphanages. Right now we're in the process of building a hospital in Sierra Leone. So there are projects related to education, humanitarian work, helping orphans and widows, supporting students of knowledge regarding deen, trade schools, we're building a community college, not just with the Islamic studies uh, portion, that component, but also skills so people can learn IT and other things as well. So anything that touches your heart, Please stop by the table, give towards that cause. Anything and everything is appreciated, alhamdulillah. But the specific cause that I present to you today is in connection with the severe drought that's going on in East Africa and Somalia. It's the worst drought that they have faced in years, in decades. Just to give you a quick figure, two quick figures and I'll conclude. One, $40 will feed a family of nine for a month. Let that sink in. Here in America, you go, you get a thought of two people, 40 bucks gone. Uh, easily. $40 will feed a family of nine for a month. So if you have the means to sponsor a food package, please do so. If you can sponsor a food package on behalf of Every member of your immediate family, please do so. If you can do 10, then do so. 100, then do so. However much you can give, then please do so. And there's no question, of course, this is zakat eligible. This is the essence of zakat. Lil fuqara wal masakin. To help the poor, to help the needy, to help. They're struggling to survive. So that's one figure. $40 will go that far. It's incredible, subhanAllah. The second thing, and I'll conclude with this. If we don't step in, if we don't intervene, if we don't help out, then over a million children by July will end up passing away. Over a million children will end up losing their lives. We have to do our part. We have to do what we can so we can at least show up on Judgment Day and say, Ya Allah, I tried. I did what I could. I gave what I could. Please stop by the table and, and give what you can. Please give me a few moments after prayer in that regard. We ask Allah to guide us and forgive us. We ask Allah for the best of this life and the next. And we ask Allah to protect us from his punishment. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw akhtatna. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala alladhina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bihi wa'fu anna. Waghfir lana warhamna. Anta maulana fa'ansurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin wa aqim al-salah. If the brothers can please scoot up as much as you can. Fill in the gaps.